What's up guys, Viper FV here, and today today we have the Geelan Wasp V2. Came in for review for Banggood, and uh, just pretty much took it right out of this little pouch here. Took it out, and didn't really see much instructions, and was like, well, let's go ahead and make a setup video for it. Um, so this will pretty much apply to any pretty much bite and fly you probably get, um, mostly. Um, this does have the TBS Nano Crossfire Receiver in it, and uh, what we're going to be doing is pretty much setting up our quadcopter in beta flight getting it bound and just pretty much showing you guys what i do when i get a brand new quadcopter in for review um so before i do and reviewed everything and release that video which should take a couple weeks for me to zip this thing around looks really fun and cool doesn't it it's a little tiny if you don't know what this thing is already it's like a little tiny like four millimeter bottom plate i want to say like toothpick style quadcopter it's a 2s quadcopter i believe you can also go up to 3s i believe um i'll leave a little caption down there if it's not uh but pretty much it's a little quadcopter you can go and fly around like angle so just pretty have all the authority of having like a big five inch but it's under 250 grams and uh you won't get in trouble for flying this thing around um or need to register it uh with the faa if you are flying it around so let's go ahead and uh tell you guys how i set this thing up all right, so the first thing we're going to go do is we're going to bind this thing up to our radio. Um, now, I'm assuming that you guys already have a model set up on your radio already. Let me go ahead and take mine out. So I want to assume that you already have a model already set up in here, uh, like I do. Um, so I have my Crossfire model set up with all your endpoints. If you are curious about how to set up a model on your Tyrannus, it doesn't matter, QX7, Horus, TX16, whatever. Um, I'll be leaving some links down below if you want to get those set up first, and then you can kind of jump back over here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to bind up the quad so I can have it bound up. And then what we're going to do is probably jump over to beta flight and then set up our switches there. I mean, it's really what I do pretty much on these little binder flies that come. Um, some of them you have to um, maybe set your own rates or whatever for. Too. We'll do all that in beta flight. So um, we're going to bind this crosswire receiver up real quick. I'm going to get a battery. So that battery, we have to flip it over because our crossfire receiver, they mounted the receiver underneath the bottom plate, so it's super hard to get to, um, but it's a little button you just have to press. If you're on the crossfire system, you get powered up first, then press the button. If you're on Free Sky or the other other one, you have to have the button pressed while you um, power it up. So it's a little harder on the Free Sky to actually bind because you can actually have two sets of hands, one to hold the button, one to plug it in. So real quick, I've done these in prior videos where I've went ahead and bound to the crossfire system. Um, but we'll go ahead and do it real quick. Just to show you guys what I do when I build a quad, or I get a bite and fly in anyway. Bind. Plug it in. A little something really tiny to poke the hole and i'm saying you're not gonna be able to see this at all oh actually don't even, don't even have to hit the button i love that's what i love about crossfire sometimes you don't even have to hit the button to go ahead and start sometimes it just picks it up automatically that you have a new receiver so no button press needed here but you would have to press the button if it doesn't do that for you so we'll go ahead and let this update, and then uh, we'll be right back. So pardon me, but the crossfire noise was so bad that I just had to just scrap the footage altogether. Uh, but what you're going to be doing is pretty much just waiting for it to update and then go into bind mode. It'll go into bind mode by itself, and then just go ahead and bind up after it's done updating the receiver. Uh, then we can go ahead and set up all our switches into uh, beta flight. So we're going to go ahead and head over there right now and uh, finish setting up this quad. Alrighty. So we got beta flight open. So make sure you have this installed. I am doing this on configurator 10.7.0, uh, but it should be pretty much the same for everything. Um, hasn't really changed too much, the configurator. Uh, so what we're going to do is connect it to USB. And it should pull up... I should pick up the COM port automatically. Um, so what I'm going to do is connect. And it uh, looks like we're already on beta flight 4.2 already on this quad. So that's awesome. 
Um, you can tell from that from right up here in this is right here firmware beta flight 4.2.0 and this is the configuration this is for the configurator um, so I'm just gonna really just go through here and just check and make sure everything is set up um, see what they have set up see if maybe we can make a little improvements to it um, so it looks like they are using a accelerometer we, we can actually shut the accelerometer off unless you're gonna use auto if you're gonna be using, using any of the auto leveling modes then go ahead and leave that alone um, I'm gonna leave it alone too because I don't think I really need to uh, mess with it um, we have 8K, 4K. It is using bi-directional D-Shot already. All right, cool. D-Shot 300 because it's on an 8K, 4K. So that, yeah, that should be perfect, actually. Everything set up looks like optimally there. We already have our crossfire receiver set, selected. Um, if you're on FreeSky, this should probably say S-Bus. Um, and if you're on, like, XM, uh, like, uh, what is the other one? Uh, can't think of it. Um... Spectrum. If you're on Spectrum, then that should sh show uh, Spectrum, right? Yeah, Spectrum. There you go. Uh, but then we have um, looking at the PID tune. We're gonna, not going to really touch any of this stuff. I'm just kind of looking here to see if there's um, anything. We're going to be going into the mode section real quick. I just like to go over this stuff um, really quick when I am doing um, anything when I get a new quadcopter in. Um, I like to look at the rates to see what it's at. Looks like it's wanting to spin a lot. Let's see what the receiver's showing here. Roll. All right, so yeah, this is mixed up. So we're gonna have to fix this. Um, so I'm gonna have to fix this really quick. So let me, I know I went over the PID tuning really quick. I just, I'll just i go back to that in a moment. I just wanna fix this. Um, so I'm gonna be picking a uh, spectrum. So T-A-E-R, one, two, three, four. If yours is not right, because I'm gonna go ahead and hit click save here. And then look, now it's, Throttles, throttle, yaws, yaw. And when you have your radio set up, with my video, I go over um, like setting endpoints and all that stuff. Um, if you don't see like f close to 1500 in the middle when everything's not touched and you don't see 1000 or 2000, see when I move the sticks around, I should show 2000 when I max the stick out and then 1000 when I am the lowest. Um, check out that video to make sure this is set up right or your quad copper is not going to fly right. Um, so I'm gonna go back to pit tuning really quick, and I'm just gonna set my rates. I don't, these are a little low for me. Um, this is the ones I'm using, so that's up to you if you want to touch them. Um, you can use default rates. This is just kind of how sensitive the stick is to my inputs. And this is really user preference. Everybody kind of flies at different. Um, All right, so I got that. I have a thousand. That's how I have my rates set up. That's kind of what my muscle memory is used to on my sticks. I probably should lower it down and probably get more and more um, better, I guess, precision. If you're like doing racing and stuff, probably want a lot lower. Uh, but that's what I pretty much train myself on. So that's what I do. So I'm going to go to the receiver tab. Just make sure everything is okay. Like I said, all this stuff is already set up. I already have it all perfect. Um, my switches also work, as you can see. So I have all my aux switches. Everything. That's all explained in the radio video uh, that I linked down below. Um, so I'm going to go into the modes tab real quick. We have arm on aux 1, and then they have angle on aux 2. So I'm going to set this up for my how my switches are set up. I have aux 1, def, I have aux one like that. I actually do not use angle mode, so I'm going to remove that. So all you do is remove a mode, is exit out over there. Um, we do have FPV mix. Yeah, we're going to remove all that because I don't use any of that I like our air mode anyway already I have my um, aux 3 that's already set up and then I just have a beeper I like to have a beeper set so let me go to beeper and do that to aux 2 I'll bring those in a little bit too so then when I have a switch Engine. see Engine. it activates the switch but it's red since it can't you're not you can't arm a quad when it's plugged in via USB um, but beeper right there um, I'm not sure if beeper is actually configured in here let's see if they have it uh, beeper yeah it's, we can do it ourselves RX set so when it beeps when an aux channel is set for beep so we can instead of having a beeper we can just go ahead and use the motors to beep so I'm gonna click on save and reboot on that connect back up and then the OSD let's see if the, oh, how they have their OSD set up oh. I have a mess of stuff here. 
Um, I'm gonna move some of this stuff around. Don't know why. See, I don't need any of this stuff. Fly modes? No, don't need that. Crosshair? I don't like that. Uh, battery, average cell voltage. I'll just, uh, throttle position? Don't need it. VTX channel is actually kind of nice to have, so I'll put that down here. This is too busy down here. I might actually shut that off. Graph name. Well, for, I guess for the review, we'll have to leave it on, right? Shut that. And then shut off on something you don't want. You just unclick these or click them. Uh, I'm going to move that over. Yeah, that looks good. Click save. And if you're unsure of how to set it up, you can put your... You can power it up and then put your goggles on, and um, you can position it live actually while it's connected to USB how you want it in your goggles. Um, everything else is all set up on here, so it looks like it is actually ready. Has made my modes a little more. Just fix that a little bit, and then I bound the receiver. So it is pretty much a bind and fly, but besides just changing a little bit of things in the computer. So that's pretty much it to set up the Geelin Wasp V2. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything from Betaflight. It's really simple actually to set up. It's actually some of the actual easier quads I've actually set up, even though it's a little tiny guy. Some could consider it a toy, a little toothpick style quadcopter. Um, but I haven't actually flown it yet because, like I said, I'm doing this video. Um, just to set you, show you guys what I do to set up a, video, a quad when I'm doing it. Um, but if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe. And if you want to check out this product, um, I'll be leaving a link to this down below if you want to pick one of these up. It is an affiliate link, and it does help support the channel, help support me. Um, but this is Viper FPV, and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.